Next we're going to look over Composer. The Compose module is used when you want to lay out multiple pages and is simply used by double clicking to open and then clicking and dragging the images you want to lay out. Now you can bring in one copy of each or you can drag multiples. You can also use the step and repeat, repeat functions built into Composer. The first thing you want to set up is your page format. Now you can select the printer that you've got installed as well as a common page size for that printer. You can also use the width and height settings to just make a custom size. You can simply click and drag objects to place them roughly where you want them. Or you can use the settings tabs to draw a grid as well as snap to that grid or allow for free movement. The addition buttons allow you to quickly scale or rotate as opposed to simply moving around. The objects tools allow you to draw lines and squares as well as type in text. Now this is not a design program per se, but it will allow you to put notations for either job numbers or customer names. The tools buttons allow you to scale, rotate, nest, cut, copy, and paste to fill up your page with whatever objects you need to. There's also your standard alignments tools which allow you to move and positioning tools which allow you to put things exactly where you want them on an XY chart. The final set of tools along your right bar is your dimensioning tools, which allow you to adjust by width and height or by percentage, whichever way you would like to to scale an object either larger or smaller than what you need. Now let's go ahead and test out some of these tools. The first one we'll use is our alignments tool. So we'll go ahead and open it up, select both of the objects that we've got on the screen currently, and use our alignment tools to align them at the top or even overlap by just clicking on the left. Now you can always override it by clicking on one of the objects and pulling it off to the other side. We can also use our tools for cut and paste by simply clicking on the object that we want to copy, clicking on the copy button, and then unselecting it clicking on the paste icon. This will create duplicate and you can keep clicking paste to make multiple. Right above our copy button is also our nesting button which if we select all of our objects we can click on. Now if we want to adjust our nesting properties, there's a shortcut down at the bottom which will allow us to adjust spacing and rotation if possible. You can also manually rotate an individual object by highlighting and clicking on the rotate button. And if you deselect rotate auto in nesting, once you re-nest these objects, the objects will stay in the position they are without rotation. A great feature when using flatbeds is the object tool where you can apply text messages. Now you can use this text to simply click and draw a text box and then add information such as who this job is for, a job number, or what material to print it on. All of these will make your life much easier when you're actually printing out the file and letting you know for finishing and production purposes. Now that we've got this document ready to print, we're going to click on the export button at the bottom so that we can bring this to our images tab so we can print it just like any other job. We'll save it as a PDF and then give it a name. In this case, I'll just use the job number that we created earlier. By saving it in a hot folder, I eliminate having to go into File Manager and add this, this image to our job queue. And it'll go directly into whatever tab in our images directory that that hot folder points to. After you click Save, you're ready to finish and click on Quit. Now, it may come up and ask you if you'd like to save your work. Since we've already done that, I'll just click No. Once we've done that, after a moment it'll show up in our images tab just like our hot folder was designed to do. Once our job shows up in our image browser, we can crop out anything that we wouldn't want. Like for example, this layout, we had some extra white space, so we'll double click on it to open the file. Once it shows up in preview, we can simply just draw a box using our selection tool. And then once we've got everything selected, we'll use the very first tool across the top, which is your addition button. We'll hit copy and we'll create another file that has the same name only it says dash underscore one which allows us to have a new file without overwriting our existing one that doesn't have that excess white space. Hopefully this has been a helpful tool and we'll see you next time.